This week on the Push Wallet Podcast, we're back from an Italian adventure. And we talk about cuisines, cliches, and which are the best foods from those countries. Then we've got a little bit of ESD, cardio, and how to actually program it so you are a benefit to yourself and your clients. It's pretty cool. Oh my God, is this it got out? Three, two, one. What films you watch, Dan? Hey guys, welcome to the Push Poor Leg Podcast with myself, Damik. And me, Tomo. What's going on, boy? I'm all good, mate. The film I watched on the flight back from Italy was called The Match. Ooh. And it was possibly one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. And it's got a rating here of 5.8 on IMDb, which is extremely generous, may I add. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, that's quite low. Yeah, that's generous. It's basically inspired by true events from a Nazi uh, Nazi Second World War football match that was organised between a camp inmates and an elite Nazi team on Adolf Hitler's birthday. Uh, and there was no one in it I recognised, but um, I was like, oh, this could be interesting, you know, see what it's about. And it, like I said, possibly the one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. Don't recognise a single person in it. The acting was absolutely atrocious. The story was absolutely atrocious. Mark Viduka was in it. For about a split second, I did recognise oh, him. <laughs> yeah, he was one of the um, he was one of the football coaches, like right at the start, because they cut back in time from when the kid and he was asking his grand grandpa about how he fell in love with football, and it was because he was a, he was one of the kids at the thing, and it was just like I was waiting for something to happen and get good, and it just was awful. So there you go. Don't ever watch it. I've just saved you a lot of time and energy, but um, yeah, dreadful, dreadful film. Um, I can't remember wasted that much time talking about it, to be honest. But yeah, 5.8. <laughs> I mean, that is high. I mean, I wouldn't have given it two because it was very, A, very predictable. It was obvious what was going to happen. And they just dragged it out for two hours. Uh, that was just shit. So yeah. There you go. You shit. There you go, mate. Wow, I didn't watch that. So yeah, I, tried to get, I tried to get some sleep because I was unfortunately in the airport for like five hours. So... I was, I was flying from two, 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. So it's kind of like you don't really want to fall asleep at that time. Mm. It's, it's, not, it's not good. Um, but yeah, well, no, I, I had okay. a nice I, flight. So. You're closer. To, no, I don't know. You're, you're definitely closer. I'd still had like an hour, hour 10 drive afterwards. But positives didn't lose my luggage. Yep. Well, I mean, that's a huge positive for saying you're flying into the UK. <laughs> so. But it was like, like on the way, I didn't actually take any uh, video or pictures of I wasn't sent to you. Just like heaves of just luggage in like the the baggage like reclaim, just all like yeah. stacked up and just left yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, what the fuck is that? Like going somewhere? Are people already left and it's just sitting there? Or... That's what I was like. Crazy. That's what I couldn't I work like, out why or how it was all like like that. I was like, I don't really understand. Um, yeah, so luckily, when you're traveling with golf clubs, it actually goes to a completely separate bit. So came out, bump, bump, yeah. all good, really, really quickly. <laughs> I was gone within two minutes. So... Yeah, mine mine came out slower, unfortunately, in Dubai, in the other end, coming out of the special entrance. But um, well, yeah. well, Dan Dan yeah. spent 45 minutes, because he's not traveled with his golf clubs before, 45 minutes next to the regular luggage in Milan. <laughs> then well, realized the thing is, I checked it, I checked it in in my normal, in the normal place, in, in Dubai. I checked it in in the normal way. Dan and he brought his telescopic golf club. But... <laughs> yeah, he didn't say anything to me. He didn't say like, oh, this is this is a different size or whatever. He just took it and, and posted it. And I was like, okay. Great, like you know, post it. Um, yeah, posted it and thing. Yeah, just gave me the thing and didn't didn't mention it. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd lost them. I was like brilliant. And then I turned up, turned around, went to the uh, abnormal sized baggage reclaim, oversized, and it was just sat on the floor. It was like great, but luckily I didn't. I had to wait for Tom anyway, so it wasn't right, a problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're all good. We're all good, all right, mate. I've... But uh, I mean, the most important bit, Tom, of course, of the whole golf and holiday, <laughs> we need to make sure that everyone is aware of this. Is that I. <laughs> One, I won time. We had yeah. six rounds of golf. We drew three of them. You we won one, and I won. I won two, so yeah. I won two one. And Tom, the one that Tom did win was the last round when I'd already won, <laughs> and I definitely hadn't played my best that round. But also for me, it was like, well, I let Tom win one, so don't worry. About cool, I've got to let, um, let yeah. Nah. No, he did play. No, he actually <laughs> played his best golf on the last round. To be fair to him, so you know he, he would have won that one. But um, yeah, two two rounds I won and. Tom 
I tell you what it was. It was on the, I think it was the third to last, third to last round we had. Tom missed a putt on the 18th to win it. He missed the putt to win, and it was it wasn't that far away, and he missed no. it. So it was all, so it was all square on that round. The round after that, I won two up, loading into the last round. Tom was devastated because uh, the way we played the game, match play for those who know golf, um, means I won. But if we were probably adding up all the strokes, I may have lost. Because if I'm playing match play, I'm very much of the opinion like, oh, fuck it off. It's no point. If, Tom's, yeah, exactly. if Tom's birdied or parred it, you kind of go, oh, what's the fucking point? I'm like, it doesn't really matter. You take your, you take your mind off it a little bit. But um, yeah, so it was... Um, but that, yeah, that was the game yeah. we were playing, wasn't it? So yeah, and it. unfortunately, it. yeah, maybe I was consistent, but yeah, it didn't have as many like, yeah, ridiculous holes when, yeah, you kind of like, you're like, fuck this, it's fine, I'll triple bogey. And I was like, no, I'm going to grind. Um, yeah. yeah, unfortunately. So Tom's yeah, biggest just... error was that he, I think it was on a couple of holes. I'm trying to remember which, which ones they were now. Which holes oh, I can I can already, I can I know my biggest error. There was a 60 yard, anybody, actually my pitch in, Dan will agree, was pretty good throughout the whole week. I pitched it in was. actually. Um, yeah, you did. And he was pissed. Um, and yeah. there was just one par five. I think we were all square at the time. Um, and yeah, literally let like you had a on a par five and I had a 60 yard shot, which I've been nailing all day and didn't yeah. account for the wet ground uh, nearer the pond. And yeah, slipped it straight in, didn't I? Slipped it straight in the pond. I was like, and literally you saw me, I was fucked off pretty much. Because yeah. <laughs> I played I think the whole That was at that point. That yeah. I think that lost you the route round. You were gone uh, after that. Yeah, point. my head, head was gone. gone. I was just like, fuck Your this. head had um, completely gone. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, um, but no, it was very good fun and it will not be the last time. So um, there'll be many more um, events yeah. like that. The next one probably be in Dubai later on this year um, when the weather cools down a bit, I'm sure. Get time out for a week, and we'll do another another round, and maybe maybe even get stuck involved. You know, we never know. Get some stable foot on the go, but um, but yeah, the, the most important yeah, we'll, thing we'll, you guys we'll, we'll, need we'll to have know to play stable foot from, from Suk. I don't think he wants yeah. to play match. No. <laughs> the one thing you do need to know, and you just need to, all you guys need to remember from the holiday is that I won. That's all you need to know. two two one. So we should have made a little trophy. I did think about it. I was like, we'll get a little trophy, like uh, and Sorry, just, I'll just I'll just mention etch, it every podcast. It that'd be that'd be a trophy enough. I'll mention it every podcast. It's, <laughs> it's not a problem. Don't worry. Um, That's yeah. right. All we've learned is that I need to go away and learn how to hit my big clubs because uh, even though I hit it quite far, uh, they don't work. Um, and uh, Dan needs to go around and hit his little clubs because he yeah, he yeah. gets very confused when it gets to about getting the ball in the hole is quite mm. confusing to him. So yeah, yeah, I'm quite good at getting it closer to the hole than you uh, with one shot. <laughs> <laughs> just just not so much with the second and third shots. <laughs> but yeah, we're working on it. But um, no, it's all but, yeah, it was not my favorite place to play golf. I have to say, in terms of the layout of the courses and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They were extremely tight. Height. there was a um, it was a range of stuff wasn't it so but if uh yeah i think obviously our golf it looked that way when uh when it was tighter um i seemed to play better but that was mainly because yeah in england they are tighter courses and when it was larger i was like because i wasn't hitting my long stuff the whole play the whole time i didn't really have a, a look in because i'm playing like iron shots all the way so unfortunately yeah. so i think we need to go to the tightest place possible and uh, go play there so now nah, i'll get my i'll get my big clubs swinging by the time we're we're playing again mm. anyway so i think every uh, odd question dan not odd question obviously i got asked by uh, someone today they were like oh yeah so you're away a week uh, did you work out no <laughs> no fuck no Ooh. all right people don't realize this and literally i said this is one of my clients and i said keith you were just in Cornwall for three weeks. Did you do any accountancy whilst you were there? He was like, no, no, I didn't. I was like, there's your answer. Okay. I did yeah. not go to a gym. <laughs> no. It's, 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 anyway from all the golf. Oh, like, me. It, like, people think golf is just like, oh, it's just this <laughs> gentle old man sport. And I get it. You know, it might look that way to some people. Or that might be how you play golf, you know, if you're listening to this. But when you play <laughs> it properly and when you actually kind of hit it quite far and you think about the athletic movements involved, Day after day after day, your back starts to be like, oh my God, stop now. Please stop because this is hard. Um, and we were, some some of the courses we walked, 
which I'm quite hilly. Some of them we got buggies around, and obviously in Dubai, I'm just used to buggies everywhere. So I was fucked more than Tom because I was walking everywhere. Um, <laughs> some of these courses pushing a trolley and that shit. Um, yeah, it just takes out you in in a bit, of, you know, the heat as well and all that sort of stuff. Plus we're on holiday, so we're just like, well, we want to relax as well. But yeah, I think it was like three, four, four days of four, four days of thirty thousand steps, and then two days of about twenty thousand because they're the days we had buggies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's answering golf club with power, you know, because we are athletes. It takes out you. You're not going to train with all that going on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. So it brings on to they've got two two topics today. One very lighthearted, which we're going to do right now. Um, because I know Dan's going to want to talk about this, and it's obviously something I just uh, I did a story about this morning. Um, also, yeah, what was Dan thought it was very strange on the fact that I had like three to four beverages every morning of uh, like I'm a child. I don't know, yeah. child. Do children do that, Daniel? What was your reasoning? It was it was it was weird. It was more just a case of you like got them all out together and laid them out. Like I've not got a problem <laughs> with someone having a fair few drinks in the morning. It's more just a case of, for me, I have maybe, you know, I'll have my water first if I'm at home. Then I'll have my coffee. Then I'll have a, maybe a protein shake. That's okay. In that order, you had them all out together and you were like taking sips from different ones at different times. <laughs> Look at me. I was just like, what's going on here? Like, um, I think, was it four you had at one point? Or was it three you had? No, three oh, you I had think... at home. Three you had when we were in the in the, the Airbnb. I think you had four when you were home on your Instagram today. You had four. Yeah, because I had water, I think, because like, and this is yeah, That's right, you didn't have water, did you, when you were away? You just had no, the so yogurt much. drink, the apple juice, coffee. They were the three. Well, I, had, I had iced tea and have apple juice. Was it iced tea, was it? Sorry, it looked like Oh, yeah, juice. well, we didn't have any. Well, we didn't the, have apple juice, the, did we? Yeah. <laughs> did, if anybody knows that Dan has a serious fucking addiction, and um, we, <laughs> we, bought, we bought about, I'm gonna say, we were there for seven days, and in terms of 1.5 litre to 2 litre bottles, we bought about 8 to 10 of them. Um, that's a lot of iced tea to get through, Daniel. Um, yeah, iced tea is quality. <laughs> the high sugar stuff as well. This lad, it is nutrition. I didn't realize that, obviously I've spent a lot of time with you, but I haven't probably spent time like just where we're not working or doing stuff. Yeah. And uh, there's certain little food groups that he doesn't eat and didn't realize he doesn't like tomatoes. He's like, nah, and don't look at that. And a little bit, little bit of a picky eater than I thought you were. I, I wouldn't eat tomatoes plain. I have one of pizza and pasta, and that sort of stuff <laughs> like that. But I just wouldn't pick up a cherry tomato and go, "Ooh, lovely," and eat it. Like that's not my thing. But <laughs> the other thing about the iced tea is we're on holiday, so it's like you know you don't. I don't care don't, about that sort of shit. Count does it? Calories but don't also, count on holiday. You, you heard it here, guys. Don't count every, every, all the but also, <laughs> I would have, I would have gone for the the lower sugar or lighter options, but because it was all in Italian, I didn't know what the fuck I was looking at. So I just was like, I don't care. I'll just drink iced tea. Um, so yeah, that was my thing. But um, Tom was quite surprised. So me and Tom are very different. So I don't really eat breakfast. I'm not fussed about breakfast. The amount of times I yeah, go and play yeah, golf yeah. on like one yogurt or something and go and play. And Tom was like, I literally am not moving from this sofa until I've eaten food. Like it's not yeah. happening. Like there's no, nothing else happens in Tom's day until he started <laughs> eating food. Um, which I found quite funny. Like again, we 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 learned a little bit about each other because obviously we've never spent a whole week together before like that. So um, yeah, quite funny. Uh, and yeah, we've I can't do it. And then Tom Golf as well. That's the other brilliant, thing. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> not, well, all all I really need realized that I need to play four times a week for the last twelve months, like Dan has. Um, yeah, suddenly, I'll be bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to do that. Just got to work my way to have that flexibility in my life. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, mate. It. And it's going to be bowling, absolutely bowling. Yeah. Then I'm um, then I'm fucked. <laughs> <that'll be laughs> By the way, then I'm um, fucked. that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, I've, I can give you. I've got two drivers as well. I realised I've still got my old driver. I, should, this, I was just like, there's another, there's another club I don't hit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, we're going to talk about because uh, yeah, actually the 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 poll I put up this yesterday was the most cliched food um i thought that'd be interesting dan because um those are the three cliched foods that i think about in italy because we were we were well dan was quite annoyed that we were in italy and we didn't seem to find any lasagna weird um i don't know whether that's because like where we were isn't really pasta orientated i don't really are they yeah so my italian client my italian client i'm checking today told me it's because um where we went 
it's more of a southern thing around Bologna, apparently, more lasagna. And again, okay. risotto and lasagna are both more at, um, autumn winter foods, mm. which makes sense, I guess. I, I one, you know, the one pot dish thing, I, I, I kind of get it, but I just thought, I just thought it was quite surprising that we only saw lasagna once. I ordered it and it was again very different to how we have it over here. It was just pasta and cheese effectively, like layered with a bit of mince, like in one of the sheets, and there's about eight sheets, and then it was on top of tomato sauce rather than like in it which is very and then again my client said yeah because in italy everyone makes lasagna different so it's like there's no lasagna it's just however you like to make it kind of thing so um yeah which makes which makes sense but um yeah didn't see many risottos either i thought it'd be full of risottos like but again it's not really summary dish which i understand now makes more sense yeah so and i've been to italy before but i only went for like three four days and we stayed we were proper to like tourists in rome um mm. and just immersed ourselves in that and i didn't realize and i didn't pick up on it previously that like uh pizzas don't tend to have meat on them weird isn't it they're just like yeah a lot of pizzas didn't have meat did they yeah we we were Vegetable struggling weren't we them. we were like where's the fucking salami give me a fucking pepperoni where's the pizza, pepperoni pizza? <laughs> yeah <What's laughs> that doesn't on? exist that's an, that's an american thing we know that but like at least some salami yeah. or some like whatever so it's quite it's it's rarer than you think it was like for vegetarians, absolutely fantastic. I think Italy is a great place to go because they actually don't have 100%. much meat on on their stuff. I'd say it's seventy percent vegetarian and then mm -hmm. like thirty percent meat based things. We did have to even out when I said to Dan, I was like, I found a really really good meat restaurant. You were like, Yep, that's yep, let's go there. Um, <laughs> yeah, five hundred and fifty gram steak. Yes, let's yeah, go for that. That's, <laughs> yes. That pasta mm -hmm. was incredible. To be fair, that we had uh, there. Yeah. Was great. Um, yeah, um, and no, it, was, also, it, was, it was good. The food was good, yeah. I also found out about myself that uh, clearly it is something to do with British or hard cheese that I cannot process because my gut was absolutely fine. I've can, I, I, No, soft can, cheese, uh, isn't it? Soft, soft cheese, cheese, wasn't it? Because soft cheese you were good. eating hard cheese, weren't you? Because it was... Was it the I didn't around? have any. I, 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 I had soft cheese, obviously, because I was having like mozzarella and... That's it, that mozzarella kind of and ricotta were fine, but you didn't yeah, have they were hard fine, cheese. That was I didn't it. have any hard yeah. cheese, so... So, which was good for Dan because uh, obviously fuck. we were we were staying in a, obviously a two bed apartment. It was nice, uh, pretty pretty chill, reasonably big. And uh, but yeah, I would have stunk him out. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, do not need that in my life. Thank so, you. So, yeah. yeah anyway, glad, uh, was okay. I, you you went for pasta. Then did you go pizza, pizza, pasta, or gelato? What was your big best cliche food? The best cliche food was the pasta. Because I, I thought I was like, oh, pasta's pasta. Like, come on, like, it's, no, but good pasta. Nah, is fucking it incredible. tastes so much better over there. Yeah, so much better. Like, I like you could identify that it was from Italy. Like, it was just like if you yeah. lined it up with home cooked stuff, it'd be better. And you know, everyone's like, oh yeah, as long as you cook it al dente, it's good. No, 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 no. it's not just no, about no, that. No. It's not just about that. There's there's all the other stuff that goes with it, and it was it was yeah, really nice. I had a fish one, fish ravioli. Oh my god. Oh, it's just so good. So, so good. But yeah. Um, the pizza, again, was... I think pizza is very unique anyway. I think some people like thick crusts, thin crusts, deep pan, stuff, whatever, right? But for me, the good pizzas we had were good, as I would expect them to be. And I had one that I didn't like, that Tom loved. Uh, well, not loved, but he liked as well. I didn't like... I don't like thin and crispy, whereas the two one was thin and crispy, and Tom was like, oh, I thought it was quite nice. I didn't like it. Mm. I prefer the ones with the thick crusts sourdough thick crusts um they were the best ones but yeah but no it was um so the gelato was gelato like you, again that's the same as it is in the uk that was no different like to me good. the ice cream wasn't different it was good but it wasn't any different oh well, we also learned that dan cannot control fucking gelato whatsoever give him a cone right. the guy is all over the place Jesus. It was hot, mate. It was melting. <laughs> she gave me too much gelato. It got over my shoes. What more do you want me to? I can't do anything about it. All right. Hey, we walked walked back to the car, and the lad had more gelato on his hand than it, on his coat, and more than he put on his hand than he had in his face. So, and he was just like, "Where's the toilet? Yeah, Where's the toilet? It's dripping you're exaggerating now. <laughs> no, you're exaggerating now. I'm not having it. I was um, fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, but this this yeah. uh, left me thinking in terms of cuisines. Can we go for? Let's pick. One or two in terms of cliches. Um, like, obviously, you pick one, I'll pick one, decide which one's best. And we've got, I've just listed a bunch of cuisines. Um, and mm -hmm. hopefully, it's stuff that we've tried, Daniel. Um, it's probably prerequisite that you have tried it. 
Um, otherwise, mm. yeah, I thought you're, so. not, you're not going to know what's going on. Um, also, this the, the first one's probably got uh, this because we can we can go on about this because uh, uh, what we did in Italy. Um, right, right. Best cliched food, Italy. We decided pasta. Um, come at me, come at us. I think that's correct. I think pasta yeah. done well is better in Italy than pizza done in yep. the, around the world. Right. So yeah. there's there's less scope for like the best pasta is better than the best pizza in kind mm-hmm. of thing whereas the worst Correct. pizza is probably not as bad i feel like there's, there's more they've got a higher ceiling of quality and gelato yeah. all right uh japanese food um i haven't tried much japanese food to be honest no no but no i don't i would say sushi but i mean which would be correct yeah, but it's all sushi, though, isn't it? Technically, it's all the same sort of. Do you know? Isn't it all just Japanese white rice vinegar type sticky rice with then fish and you know, like a poke bowl is effectively just sushi but deconstructed, right? So I only know Japanese food to be sushi. <laughs> I guess uh, there's a lot of like soy based or miso based stuff and all around that. So. Mm. I think you can you can probably there's somebody probably certain some sort of broths but then you kind of moving into like Korean and Vietnamese but yeah this mm. was just something if we if we say sushi um was something that I got grief for because I was like oh we went to a sushi restaurant and they were like in Italy what there were so many they're honest to god right hand on fucking heart now which people <laughs> won't believe me I saw more sushi places than I saw pizzerias. <laughs> Right, you know, my image of Italy would be you'd walk past place and it would say pizzeria and it would have a wood, it would have a pizza oven outside, people just serving pizzas all day long, right? There was not a single place like that in Italy that I saw. There was no a very few pizzerias and so many sushi places. So we were like, it was our first night, wasn't it? Was it first or second night? I can't remember. And we yeah, were like, yeah. Well, there's so many of them, it must be something decent here. There must be good, must be good sushi, because otherwise, why is there so many of them? Um, and it was all right, to be fair. It was, it was, it was right. It was sushi. fairly I don't, I don't think you can do sushi wrong, to be honest. So it was pretty good. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those things where we got a bit of, uh, Tom got a bit of, a bit of, uh, a bit of stick for it. Um, I didn't, because I didn't think I posted about it, but um, Tom got a bit of stick <laughs> about it. Um, and I was, I was quite confused about it as well, because I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, what's wrong with that? A lot of fish in in Italy. It's like seafood. It's like quite popular. Yeah, but yeah it was quite quite strange. Just like, and and then I also uh, I was just like, yeah, we're in Italy, but I'm not gonna have pizza and pasta fucking every every meal, lunch and dinner for seven no. days. It's only so much you can take of like that heavy kind of carbohydrate. And you're like, all right, maybe I need yeah. some lean fish. Um, but I guess the other the other kind of thing, uh, Japanese have got like I guess more. Let's pick a, a very generic one for English people to know is katsu curries, some sort of basic like that. Uh, it's still not as good as sushi. So we're going sushi on Japanese. Let's switch it to Chinese then, mate. Best dishes. You have got to have one mm. favorite dish from a Chinese restaurant. Surely, crispy chili beef. Crispy oh, chili beef. Mm. See, I would Love go it. best cliche food. Surely, is some sort of duck. It's got to be duck. Duck. Okay. Duck pancakes. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So good. Mm-mm-mm. Whether it be okay. like Peking style or anything like that. So it's got to be duck. Duck over beef. Surely. Surely. Mm. Uh, you're going no. Uh, French. French not cuisine, French food. Not a fan of French food. Oh, but you can talk um, about cliched food, mate. How about a fucking a baguette? Yeah, I do. I do like pate, Cheese. pate, pate and baguette, mate. Pretty good. Um, not a fan of cheese, though. Really, like I'll eat it, but I'm not like one of these people that loves a cheese board. I would just eat plain cheddar. Like, yeah, I don't need the brie and all that crap, camembert and that. <laughs> not about that. Like. Or the borsin. Is that what it's called? Borsin. That's very good. That's French. Um, yeah, not a fan of like mussels, not a fan of snails. No, I don't think the French is that good food. Everyone bangs on about how good French food is. I don't think it's that great. Um, but I don't like Paris either, do I? So <laughs> Paris mm. smells. We've, we've it come over smell. It smells of fucking urine. Um, I would go, I would go for French bread. I'm assuming French, I think like, baguettes. I think baguettes is the 
Baguettes is the best thing like that. that the French have brought to the world. Baguettes. Yeah, there you go. Baguettes. Yeah. We're going to go for baguettes. We're taking that. Um, American. Mm. Now, this is going to be very controversial. Very, very controversial. But I think Tom's going to agree with me. <laughs> you ready? Cereal. Mm. They do the best cereals. They do the best cereals. Tell me I'm wrong. They do the best cereals. <laughs> but, I'm not really yeah, cliche, the... is it? But they it's do the best cereals. They do the best cereals. Um, so the cliched thing would be like fried chicken. Um, well, or... no, they're burgers, isn't it? Surely it's burgers. That's burgers, burgers meats, barbecue yeah. food is what I would take. Um, mm. But yeah, give it around there. Uh, Mexican. Fajitas. Can't be. Can't be. Fajitas. Uh, um, Can't be. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've spent my time around uh, some... Yeah, kind of Central American people, and uh, fajitas is, is is very much a like an Americanism kind of European oh, is thing, uh, isn't it? it? Unfortunately, it's not something they actually have. They actually do. What about nachos? And it's also the case of like we have shit tortillas here as well because normally they're just having everything a tortilla, and it's normally a corn based tortilla, whereas we have wheat based yeah. tortillas that are fucking terrible compared to the corn ones are so much nicer. Um, yeah. yeah, if you get yourself some corn tortillas, you might ever they're usually smaller and actually better, um, and they're also they call them tacos. Hard shell taco is not a normal taco. Taco is normally a cornbread tortilla. That is a taco. Right. People don't really realize that. Okay. Um, Someone's idiots. a smart ass. Someone's <laughs> a smart ass. Um, Someone's just been to a lot of fucking Mexican restaurants. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, I, I think nachos. I do like nachos, whether they have them nachos. or not. I don't know. I've never not been to Mexico. Um, uh, nachos. I do like enchiladas as well. Some sort yeah. of tostada. Yeah. Some sort of, I think, some sort of uh, like taco tray with some uh, mole. Some pork, like mole or some sort, would be good. Mole is just fucking their, their word for sauce. Um, pretty oh, damn yeah. good. All right, South American. I don't know. I don't know much. South American. I'm going to just put it like ceviche is the best thing ever. Uh, that's some, some, is. some sort of ceviche. You'd love it. It's it's basically it's fish cooked in lime juice, pretty much most of the time. So it's not cooked though; it's cooked by the acid, right? So you'll yeah, get yeah. some sort of like. Uh, so imagine getting I don't know what's popular, just like some sea bass or something like that, and then you leave it for half an hour to an hour in some lime juice, and that the acidic acidity cooks it a little bit, and it is. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You'd enjoy it, mate. I think you'd enjoy mm. it because you like yeah, it you good. like you like raw fish, so you'd be all over that. Yeah. Um, let's let's go German. German's got to be the uh, the big fuck off sausage, isn't it? Surely. <laughs> yeah, surely What's some sort called? of like sh- like Frankfurt Sch- uh, or no. schnitzels. Uh, uh, like I always get confused with that because I'm like, yeah, but is is it not just a Frankfurt from Frankfurt? Surely German sausage. Yeah, or... German, everyone, yeah, everyone says German sausage, don't they? Suppose, What's the it? they'd like currywurst and uh Brackwurst, is that what it's called? Brackwurst. Brackwurst. German Brackwurst. sausage. Brackwurst. 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 German sausages. You got schnitzel. Don't type that into Google, you seem to like them up. German Schwagbraten. <laughs> um I don't know. Mm. There's a lot of different types. Yeah, Brackwurst. There you go. Beaverst, Beaverst, Bratwurst, Beaverkus. There's loads of different sausages, isn't there? Fuck now. They love a sausage Probably in is, Germany, yeah. but we'll go Bratwurst. Um, Currywurst is the uh, the dish you want. Spanish food. Spanish food. You got Spanish tortillas. It's basically anything that they put out on a, a tapas board. Really, you got loads I of little what I love. You got a little. I love chorizo. Chorizo is is incredible. It adds flavor to great. any dish. Um, but I also do like a Spanish omelet, you know, the little potato and egg things. Mm. Is it Sp- is that a Spanish omelet or is it tortilla? I don't know what you, something you just mentioned. But... <laughs> yeah. I can go with that. I'd, I'd, I'd go. But we've picked a lot of sausage there. But I think the chorizo, surely, has got to be. Yeah. Got to be a croquette, something like that. Mm, I don't know. Um, Scandi. We had a lot of Scandinavian food. S- Ikea Swedish meatballs. <laughs> meatballs it's got to be meatballs surely that's got to be the only thing that they have they fucking love a bit of herring 
Jesus, can't can't get them away from herring. But yeah, cliched yeah. foods. We're going meatballs. Jesus. Um, let's do last one. English. Or you know, United Kingdom. What's the most cliched? Is it, we go cliche Scotland. What's that? Mm-hmm. Porridge. Mm, black pudding. Black is pudding. Scottish. Black pudding is like no, Scottish haggis, slash northern, isn't it? Isn't it? Haggis, yeah. haggis. There you go. Haggis is pretty cliche. I, guess it's I quite cliche, like haggis, yeah. if I'm really honest. Um, Not really had it. Uh, Irish, um, cliche English food. I tell you what. I'll tell you what. Cliche English food for me. Um, that I think is actually overrated. Controversial. I'm gonna say it now. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. I don't, I concur with that. It can be overrated, can it? It's just a bit. It's like you said. It's stodge. It all tastes the same. Um, once you've had a few of those chips, you've had them all. You don't need the whole fucking lot of them. The fish, <laughs> the fish, when done very well, is nice. But again, it's always too big and it's always too much batter. Um, but I think a very underrated English food is the pork pie. Ooh, pork pie. that is good shout. I do yeah. like a pork pie. Pork I love pies pork. are great. Um, I think that would be You great. cannot sausage, get them rolls. where you live. You um, no, definitely pork. not. No. <laughs> sausage rolls are pretty good devil. as well, aren't they? Sausage rolls are pretty good as well, I think. Yeah, sausage rolls are a game changer. Halfway houses, sausage rolls, off they go. Um, yeah, Wales. Their national dish is fucking cheese on toast. We'll skip that. Eccles, um, Eccles cakes. It's fucking like nothing. Eccles, is, is, is that what they have? Eccles cakes. I don't know. I don't even know. Don't even Welsh know. rabbit. Welsh rabbit well, cheese on toast. Yeah. Um, Which is just cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Irish Guinness pie. I don't know. what They just, they just drink Guinness, don't they? Pies. I had a lot of Irish stew. I had that whilst I was in Dublin. Um, it's got Guinness on it as a cliche. Some sort of Guinness. But the best, the best food's got to be surely some sort of... Uh, Roast, roast beef, surely. Roast beef. Mm. Obviously not, yeah. but yeah, it's interesting to think about. Um, yeah, just all those kind of different countries and how um, they make sandwiches in in slightly different ways is uh, my thought on that. Because you can go through every single one. Italy, basically, pizza is a sandwich, really, in it. Just open. Yeah, it's got meat, cheese, and whatever. Um, Japanese, um, you've got little bao buns sandwich brilliant they're um, amazing uh <laughs> they are amazing uh chinese food mm, struggling over there have they got sandwiches oh, dim sum kind of a sandwich dim sum basically a sandwich in it kind um of. korean and vietnamese i know they do have one because i've had it but i can't remember but you again you get more like gyozas and stuff like that um what is it? french food baguette beautiful american burger mexican really taco what all that kind yeah. of stuff basically a sandwich it's just some sort of breaded good or surrounded South American. They have a lot of tacos as well. Um, Nordic. Yeah. They have open sandwiches. They just like rye bread. Um, yeah. German, Spanish, all love a sandwich. It's crazy, isn't it? We all make sandwiches in just slightly different, slightly different ways. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Daniel. All right. Um, so we get on to some actual fitness based things. Um, and it's just, I guess we can get your, your thoughts on energy system, development this is only because the day one from uh holidays i decided to uh trot off to go uh see i can't remember his name now um captain what bike man um as i am known calling him i use the what bike reasonably fair bit i do like uh sitting on them i use it for a lot of clients trainings um basically because it's running shit and what bike gives me data <clears throat> and it's easy mm-hmm. to get data from so it was just interesting because I I feel like as a uh, a coach who specialises in training, I'm not sure sure whether it's a knowledge gap, but it's a knowledge uh, basis. I'm sure you've got it in nutrition. It's just something that I don't cover very often or don't immerse myself in, so I feel less confident programming it sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. So guess what? To get more confident, I go fucking listen to someone who's confident and does it nonstop, and that's how they train. And then and, that's and then and then I then I listen to you talk about it, and then I get upskilled. And, <laughs> and then you you great. basically yeah. I I go to a, a four hour seminar. I pick out three important things, then tell them to Dan. Dan's like, 
cool. Yeah, know that now. I don't have to go to that. Tom saves me three hours and 50 minutes, um, which is great <laughs> because we, we sit down and we go, for, yeah, so you just apply this simple logic to it uh, that you would do to other things, same principles. And you go, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, brilliant. Cool. I remember that. Cool. Yeah, that's all I had <laughs> yeah. to do. And I was like, I was basically there and all I wanted to see was like that one table that I put up on Instagram. I was like, I just wanted that fucking table. You could have forgotten all the other stuff we've just gone over. I was like, I knew all yeah. this stuff. And it's just, I wanted that table to reaffirm something I thought I knew. And it's like, I do know it. Okay, cool. It was just more on the uh, Verstegen's work to rest capacity ratios as well. And it's just something that like conditioning sessions is we know is fucking done badly across the PT world. It's getting better. It's no, getting it's better. It's not. But... It's really not. <laughs> it's getting better because I'm as, now As more. some are getting better, a lot of more are getting worse though. Like this is the thing you've got to remember is it's not just about the little people that are getting a bit better. As a mean, as an average, it's all getting worse. In my in my opinion, it's getting worse. So because the more people we... that jump on the hype and hear about hit or they hear about the benefits, it's high rocks they just, and hybrid coaching they, and hybrid training, oh, they just butcher it, don't they? They just butcher it. It's just all right. The conditioning aspect of it, and so it st- it, it relies on the same premise of um of training, and this is how I summed it up to Dan just before the show, and I was like. It's like, all right. And I, I think I wrote it and when I put it up and I was like, guess what? If you're training for one RM strength, how or like one to five, how much does the literature say to rest? Fucking like upwards of three, four, five, six minutes, right? Mm-hmm. So before you're able to compete at that capacity again, it's not a subdued like or I don't know, what I'm, a depleted capacity. So if you were to go lift, so Dan's 100 kilo uh 100 kilo deadlift that he's very proud of if he goes and does that <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he goes and does it within two minutes the chances are he might not lift it um but if he waited four I minutes he probably no, will lift right. it oh, all right. Yeah, right i saw you pick up your golf bag um <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah we he had he said he had a 25 kilo later limit but yeah i don't know he, he barely got in the car mate um <laughs> yeah so <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's the same premise, like in terms of working and resting capacity. And I think for some people, the, the good thing about what bike um, is it, it gives you training zones. Obviously, we can use heart rate for training zones. Um, that would be something that is fairly good, but it doesn't really particularly, you need some sort of, uh, I don't know, tangible wattage or something like that. So you can go up and down through the training zone quicker because your heart rate won't react to the stimulus it's got that quickly it will have to recover and that's what's taking on so it was an interesting question somebody posed that and i was like oh can't we just do this for training zones through heart rate and i was like you can but unless you're a fucking athlete your heart and your respiratory system isn't going to keep up with the zone if i drop down to zero it's still going to take some time for it to enter zero training zone or zoning one right it's going to take that time so it's about what you do as like power capacities um so it's fucking weird so in terms of like so there's the phosphogen like system everybody knows that is atp so um this thing that you last for like five to ten seconds then fucks off and it actually takes up to like 16 to 18 minutes to properly like replenish to a decent Mm -hmm. amount for repeated bout so we tend to give like so the ratio they were given there so if you've got a five to ten second bout full out big effort like hitting some big numbers on your watt bike or you're going assault bike really hard the work to rest ratio is one to 12 or one to 20 quite and people are like what i was like that's to repeat the same bout that you just did and train for max power to get up to that 90 that's that's how you're going to increase and get better bouts every single time you've got to rest for if you're hitting five well, i don't know 10 seconds you've at least got to rest for 120 seconds so two minutes afterwards before you go again for that 10 second bout otherwise you will not you will not hit that same like threshold and you and then if you're not within a 10 percent of that i would say you're not training for power anymore gone you're training for strength endurance or whatever and the same thing happens when you go down. So obviously most people will sit probably or train people in like the glycolytic system. So they're like their anaerobic system is what that hit training tends to be. But again, that's still according to this. And I, I've actually been a bit of a dick and I've underestimated it. Um, and I would going, I got, I've got the bottom end of the threshold is what I use is a one to three. So if you say the glycolytic system, 
literature says up to 45 seconds. Fuck no. If you're working hard for 45 seconds, your aerobic system is fucking taxing in. I go 15 to like 35 seconds, something like that. Um, is your glycolytic system being the predominant force before you switch over. And if you're working for that, you want from number one as work for like 30 seconds, you want at least three to five times rest. So before you work at that capacity again, um, which is fun stuff. And then you come down again. So more like uh, your oxidative dis- like system. So in between there, you've got one to three minutes. And then that's a one to one to one or one to four ratio. And then the oxidative, that's over like three minutes work. So that's the long bouts of building their engine like Dan loves to do. He and men go one to one or one to three. So the chances are if you're like if you're working for five minutes during that oxidative system, energy system development, um, you can rest for five minutes before you, you go for a repeated bout um again. So it's interesting. The thing that's hard with that, I think, for PTs is that to you couldn't keep a client entertained for that long, no. you know, working on that sort of stuff. That's the sort of thing you'd have to give them to do in their own time. Like, I think people would be, again, that's why I think a lot of PTs and classes get it wrong is not because maybe they don't know it. I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt. They don't, they don't know it. Um, but it's because you literally couldn't really do that, right? Because you just spent so much time just sat around doing nothing, but like you're, you know, you're so correct in that sense. And we used to get it all the time in football. Uh, and even back to that level, you'd sit there and go, if you want these players to perform at that level, they need more rest. And of course, no one wants that because the managers don't want the players resting. They don't want them sitting around doing nothing. They think they're going to get injured. They think they're going to, you know, and again, in England as well, during the season, it's cold. People don't want to stand around doing nothing. Um, so, you know, it's not just something that's a battle at, at PT level and normal. It's, it's a battle at all levels because it goes against wisdom in, in that sense of like, well, I worked hard and like you need to be out of breath so that you work hard. And if you want people to perform at their maximum intensity, they need maximal recovery. And, that's missing a lot of the time. So when you see players, when we saw players in football performing at max intensity, we always used to try and like them to get down to a certain heart rate to try and get below, which was because we were training them to a certain amount aerobically. But then when it came to anaerobic and like the sprint stuff, the maximum intensity stuff, we couldn't get through to people that they needed to rest longer. They just didn't believe us. They were like, no, they're fine. They're not breathing heavily. It's like, no, it's not about that. It's like, <laughs> no, stop thinking like that. Um, but, you know, so, so it is a problem for Al uh, that people don't associate rest with working hard and working at intent. When people say intensity, we know what that means, but most people assume it's getting out of breath, heart rate high, you know, that sort of thing. It's not intensity necessarily. And like it, like you say, bolts the highest intensity movement you can do, but it doesn't really look out of breath massively, does it? doing it so but, he, but when on. at the end of the race he they're blowing for a good like 10 minutes they're like yeah. but not during it you're not like you know during it they're not clearly not they're not breathing and i think i think the, the best way for pts to get their head around this because obviously they understand reps and sets and weights right and they know that if they do high reps so let's do 15 reps the chances are your rest will not be as long okay because it's not as intense but your 15 reps, how let's let's say you take three to four seconds per rep, um, and you extrapolate that out, times it by 15. Do the quick maths for me, mate. Probably like 45 to 60 seconds for that set. Cool. What do we normally give as rest for a 15 rep set? Probably people would be like, probably 60 around seconds 60 on the dot. 60 seconds on the dot, right? So Sorry. that's what that's what you've been told. Like, and you're like, you you go, hang on a minute. Yeah, I've been working for 45 to 60 seconds and I've been told to repeat that bout again. I have to do 60 seconds. Perfect. And then you scale it all the way back to fucking one RMs. I've been told I need to rest for five, six minutes per after each one. Oh shit, Mm. that rep's only going to take me a little bit longer for one RM, maybe three, four seconds. Cool, four seconds, five seconds a rep, but I'm resting for fucking five minutes. Suddenly I'm at that power threshold of what we're talking about in ESD. And you're like, Oh, it relates exactly. And it's just mm-hmm. like, shit. And yeah, I think that's what some people need to wrap their head around. Um, just as they take their problem, and it's becoming more prevalent, uh, especially with high rocks and CrossFit and national fitness games. Of if you want to train like this and get better at your ESD and your energy systems adapting better, this is how you should train. 
uh, those capacities. Yes, you can do repeated bout syndrome. Um, that's where you have short and rest and you do those high individual efforts every now and again. But that's testing strength or testing capacities, not training them. Okay, there's big, big difference. Um, and that's like what the research say. So it's just, uh, mm. this is a public service announcement um, or anything else, which would be interesting because I've actually taken on a client today who's army. Um, he's being released, I believe, from the army for the next, I don't know, six months or so. And he wants to keep his conditioning up. But he was like, mate, the training is so shocking. And I was like, this yeah, would be interesting. I've huh? heard that. Uh, <laughs> I'll be like, why are you watching my stuff? He's like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what the conditioning looks like from that to that. So I'm, I'm quite interested. Um, we'll put mm -hmm. some science behind it. It'll probably f his numbers in the fly, right? So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Beautiful, mate. Hopefully that makes sense to you, Daniel. I, I'm waiting. Actually, Daniel, Daniel uh, has just re-signed with his coach because he's too scared of the combine. Uh, he thinks it's gonna be too hard because there's too much conditioning involved, apparently. Um, no, nah, I just didn't. Uh, I just didn't want to. Just didn't want to beat you at golf and your combine <laughs> as well. It seems. I like think it's too more the case of. Uh, I, I don't think uh, much like I can't listen to Dan for anything advice. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want my face on on an app for eight weeks either. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'd just be bottom of the pile. It just would be de demoralizing. So um, yeah, I don't do many. I don't do many group yourself. things because I. I don't do many group things because I don't like you know looking like the worst one there. So it's just, uh, <laughs> which I hundred percent would be in something like that. So so what's uh, watch watch coach 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 Canva coach Cot what's his name Coach Canusi Canusi there we go. Is yeah, the, I knew it was a caddy. Yeah, no, taught me caddy. through what's, um, what's going on today. Taught me what's through going, my what's... taught me through my plan. Uh, start. Um, Start next Tuesday. I start my plan. So I've got a week, uh, get my kind of things. So I've got Ooh. Thursday, Saturday of just like a few sessions to get in the gym, move again. Um, but yeah, look, just very again, sounds daft, but very smart, easing my way back into it, programming, sort of slightly high volume, working in some movement patterns that he wants me to develop so that I can start doing more um energy system development stuff, but doing those movements in that, you know, like the the mixed modal stuff. Um, so yeah, some strength movements to focus on. Um, for the first three to four weeks, um, like I say high rep stuff, and then it's going to be moving towards low rep stuff. And obviously, then I'll be hitting bombs when I play golf. That's the most important bit, I think. Um, but you know, just about getting strong and get back in the swing of things. Like I just, like anyone, do my favorite things when I go to the gym. So I need to stop doing that and do some shit that <laughs> I find fucking hard, um, basically. So it's um, yeah, it's all it's all you know, I, all I expected. Um, but yeah, it's just having someone to check in with in it and be accountable to. It's the name of the game, you know, it's the name of the game. And that's what well, we know. We work with coaches, right? It's exactly the same thing we do. And sometimes it's just about working with someone who can take that pressure off you and the stress away from you just to go, look, do this, do that. And and look, I, I, the thing as well with, with, with Justin, the reason I work with him is because I know he'll make me do shit that I wouldn't do on my own, but I know is good for me. If that makes sense. Like I wouldn't want to go full fucking CrossFit. I wouldn't want to go full fucking bodybuilding because it's boring and full powerlifting. But it's almost a nice way to have a blend of certain things and certain cycles that focus on different aspects so that you can become a well-rounded athlete. And um, for me, it's it's a case of I wanted to, I want to, there's a few things. I want to look good. I want to perform better. I want to feel better. So it's like, it combines all those things for me. Whereas I think some people focus just on one of those things. So like bodybuilding is just about looking better in theory. Um, you could argue just doing aerobic stuff is about feeling better. Um, and then you could argue that more power and, and strength-based stuff is about performing better. And I want all three. So it's like, well, have someone who programs all three things. And you, know. you greedy kind of, basically. Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Mate. I, want it all. I, can't be, I can't be good at any of them. So I'll be average at all of them. That's, that's <laughs> So yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, but yeah, no, it'd be nice to get back in the swing of things and just like say not have to worry about it and just rock up to the gym, do that, look like an idiot. Yeah, I might, leave. I might actually train tomorrow. That might be fun. Um, there you go, yeah. mate. Yeah, you want to you want to work on that driver, mate. That's what you want to train, okay. mate. Yeah, I might just sack off. That's uh, me the first day it was alright and then it capitulated. So yeah, yeah. that's not good. Oh, that putter though, that putter's that putter, putter's dialed in. So that's right. was on fire, mate. That's, no, fucking the putt <laughs> on a 60 degree, mate, chipping in from fucking 50 yards. Which Dick. I almost lost. I almost lost that oh. that, that club because I'm consistent. Did did I leave anything at the, in Italy? Yes, I did. Always, always got to leave something. What did you I, leave? I left my water bowl and I left a shirt. How? 
because I the shirt I got out because uh, I had one linen shirt, one like button button down or whatever, is, and um, and I left it on like the bed that was in the dining room, and I know mm-hmm. exactly where it is. Um, I pinged them a message because I was like, actually, I'd rather have the bottle and the shirt. Their their accumulative value is probably worth the postage. So yeah, I was like, yeah. Well, there you go. I didn't leave anything. So. Well, because you're boring. Um, <laughs> yeah. I even like double check other than, other than, other than a room. winning record. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, uh, brilliant. All right. Didn't I need I? to come to Dubai like next week, don't I? Uh, <laughs> yeah, shut me up, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right um thanks for listening guys um if you're not on either of our email lists fucking join it because uh my i believe i'm releasing some referral some early bird shit for the next combine i think which goes in four weeks 11th of september i'm pretty sure that's that's when i'm gonna do it 11th of september yeah yeah, i'm unsure i think that's the date the date of the next intake oh, the next intake is will be live at, at the end of this week but if you want to if you want to pay me money now that's absolutely fine but yeah, in terms of the next starting when your next training i think it's around the 11th or 14th of september i believe is when uh all combine oneers will be doing their retest week and all new combiners will be doing their first test week shock they all do it in the same fucking week because that's more fun for me um yeah, yeah. so basically because it just aligns nicely doesn't it all, it all planned out shockingly um it's wonderful wonderful, wonderful. Uh, any other business Danny? not for me no, no, no. No, no, no. not for me all good um, thanks for listening guys we'll catch you next week see you later